To the news, the Prime Minister is backing the WA Premier and the decision to hold off on opening the state's border to the rest of the country. Let's go live to the Shadow Immigration and Home Affairs Minister, Christina Keneally. Uh, Christina Keneally, thanks for your time. Starting on WA, um, Gareth Parker asked the Prime Minister this question. I'll ask the same one to you because I think Labor's got the same stance, but are, are you saying that it's safe to travel from Brisbane to Melbourne or from Adelaide to Sydney but not from Perth to anywhere. That seems the position of both you and the Prime Minister right now. Well, good afternoon, uh, Kieran, and what an extraordinary uh, change of position from the Prime Minister playing politics again with state borders. Anthony Albanese, Labor's leader, has been incredibly clear throughout the entirety of this pandemic uh, that premiers and state uh, chief uh, uh, ministers acting on medical advice, making the right decisions for their, uh, their residents and their citizens. And Anthony has backed, indeed, uh, premiers of all political stripes, including Gladys Berejiklian, Peter Gutwin uh, and Stephen Marshall, when it came to border closures. We've seen the Prime Minister play politics, uh, attacking uh, Labour premiers, uh, but not saying boo about Liberal premiers who've got the exact same policies. Uh, I think enough of the border politics uh, from the Prime Minister. And why don't we focus on having a national approach uh, from a national government? If we had a national government that acted in the national interests, uh, we might have a, a, a better, more cohesive approach uh, to this pandemic. But you could say the same thing about Anthony Albanese's approach by, as you said, he's backing Tasmania and South Australia, WA and all their approaches, outsourcing it basically. You know, if that those uh, judgments, why doesn't he make the judgment to bring, have a national approach? Well, indeed, uh, Anthony Albanese and Labor backed National Cabinet when it was first convened, thinking this might actually be a good way to bring a national approach uh, to state borders to and to the range of issues that challenged Australia and continue to challenge Australia during this pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, National Cabinet dissolved pretty darn quickly uh, when it became clear that the Prime Minister was going to use it to shove responsibility for matters that should be the federal government's quarantine, international borders, aged care, just to name a few, that he would seek to shove blame for any problems onto the states. Really, National Cabinet today is nothing more than the premiers turning up and telling the Prime Minister what they're going to do and him announcing it as if he somehow got responsibility for it. Uh, this is a Prime you, Minister can who you see always wants a, a headline people, and doesn't deliver a plan. A lot of people struggling to get their heads around how... Labor and the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister as well, as we as Andrew, Andrew Clonell said, but Labor too, backing WA in this position, which is so counter to every other state's approach right now. Well, I'm here in New South Wales, and uh, let me tell you, uh, the people in New South Wales are really struggling, Kieran, and they probably look upon uh, the freedoms and the uh, and the the benefits that people in WA have, where they have so little COVID, uh, with a, a little bit of jealousy. You know, here in New South Wales, we have, uh, you pick any suburb and you will find shops that are boarded up that are not going to reopen. You will find pharmacies that, where you can't get a rapid antigen test for love or money. You will find uh, people who are, um, who are incredibly worried because they can't visit their relatives in aged care. You will see deaths in aged care homes. Uh, nearly a quarter of aged care workers who are just simply unavailable. Um, we are really dealing with an extraordinary okay. crisis in terms of what's happening in aged I care see. and what's happening to small business. And once again, Labor's Scott Morrison has gone missing. Labor's calling for Richard Colbeck to, to quit. Uh, is this another episode of, of Labor, small target Labor, trying to make the government the issue? Just keep, keep the focus, keep the spotlight, keep the attention on the government. Means you don't have to come up with more ideas. Oh, come on, Kieran. 566 people have died in aged care from COVID since 1 January alone. This government's approach to aged care is summed up in one word neglect. That's not my word. That is the word chosen by the Royal Commission into Aged Cares. And that's what they titled their interim report. 
We have an aged care system that was in crisis before the pandemic. It was in crisis during the pandemic when the Senate censured Richard Colbeck last year. And now we are in another crisis. How is it that we are in the third year of this pandemic? And what did the government announce today? A task force to look at data in aged care. I'm sorry, Karen. I don't see having, how having a bunch of bureaucrats sitting around pouring over data in a windowless office is going to solve the problem of somebody's grandmother who's in aged care and her wounds aren't getting dressed, of somebody's father who is in aged care and who's not getting toileted or to meals on time. Richard Colbeck has presided over a diabolical circumstance in aged care. He should resign. He should resign, and if he won't, the Prime Minister should take responsibility and sack him.